tonight. Sunshine and fresh air, clean and wholesome food, proper exercise, thoughts of right and good. Keep the cheeks aglow, bodies fit and strong. Keep the brain alert and clean and give the heart a song. Help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. Healing for the heart and lame and vision for the blind. Help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. It's our goal, a body, whole and spirit, flesh and mind. Help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. Help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. Amen, amen, amen. All right. Health for you, health for me, health for all. Is there some sound? I think she got bumped off. I don't see her. She probably got bumped off. So let's welcome everyone. Dr. E, you can take over and just welcome everyone for us. Welcome, welcome everyone to another evening of extending your life naturally. As usual, we have our team with us. We have Brother Carlton Graham. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, thank you for being back. And we have our sister Peterkin. Hello, everybody. Good evening. And our, we have um, sister Shirlene who just got bumped off. But it's a pleasure to be here with you again. And of course, we are here to meet your needs. And of course, to point sin sick men and women to the man of Calvary, Jesus Christ. Amen. But before we get into the meat of things, we want to open up with a word of prayer by Brother Graham. Let us bow our heads and, and welcome the Holy Spirit. Father in heaven, we are so grateful for your love and grace and mercy that you have shown us on this beautiful Sabbath day. Lord, we had a full day since this morning with our evangelistic effort with Brother St. Jude's giving us the message that for the world. Lord, now we are coming down to right now this afternoon, Dr. Thomas Jackson, we're asking you to fill him with your Holy Spirit, that he will bring words of healing that comes from the words of life and bless every one of us that will be on the line tonight, even the visitors that will come in and hear your words. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Oh no, I don't know what happens. You know what, what the, right devil, <laughs> the devil is a liar. You know what this is a sign of? This means that this program is going yes. to be so powerful and it is going to touch all of our hearts because yes. he is really trying today. And yes. we rebuke him in the name of Jesus, okay? So hey, guys, nice. I, just, I will just testify and say that you guys have are in store for a special treat tonight. So if you haven't um, shared the link with your family and your friends, I invite you guys to do so right now. Um, we just pray. Thank you so much, Brother Carlton, for that prayer because we definitely need it. And we are in warfare. You know, that's one thing that I am realizing more and more each day. We are in a spiritual battle, okay? So we have to gird our loins. We have to be saturated in prayer. And we definitely need the faith of Jesus Christ in order to make it through. So I... I just want to say welcome to everyone. I apologize. I don't know what happens, but yeah. I'm here and I'm glad to amen. be back. <laughs> amen, amen. Amen. And I'm glad Praise the Lord. members are here. I thank God because I was praying because everyone was going to be busy today and it looks like the team is here and I thank God to see your faces, Dr. E, Donna Lee, Carlton. I praise God that you guys are here. I'm so happy that we can share the platform this evening. 
Every we have to. We weren't going to leave you by yourself here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Listen, God is in control. Ultimately, we are just vessels. You know, we're veiling ourselves to be used by God. And oftentimes we feel like we're on an island by ourselves. You might feel like we're alone, but you know what? We are not alone. God is here with us and God will bring us. If, if our family rejects us, he sends us an extended family, okay? And God has given me an extending your life naturally family, okay? Amen, and amen. You're preaching, amen. Yeah. You're preaching. <laughs> These are my family members. I'm sorry, I'm preaching. I'm just so excited because I know that we are in for a treat tonight. I'm looking forward to hearing um, our guest this evening. And I just want to welcome everyone that is on the platform. I want to see by raise of virtual hands, who's here for the first time. Let me just check, you know, see who is visiting us for the very first time. Anyone? I know we have our regulars. Hi, Leandra. I see you in the chat. Hi, sis. <laughs> we love you too, Leandra. Yes. <laughs> we love oh, you. yes. So do you guys see any new individuals? Let's see. Yes, the hands are raised. We, we have seven quite hands a few. Eight hands are raised. Oh, praise Nine. the Lord. <laughs> wow. Praise God. the Lord. I'm so happy that you have joined us. Um, I'm not seeing my chat, but I'm trusting that uh, my team can see who's yes. there the name. Um, we welcome you. We are so glad that you are here. You are in the right place at the right time. Okay. And in a world that is uh, saturated with fear, yes. right? Because of this invisible enemy of ours um, that is taking people on by surprise and trying to capture our health. The thing that God wants us to know is that he is in control and God has a plan for your health and my health. So it's up to us. If we don't know what God's plan is, how can God bless us? Really? Right? If we don't know which way to take, if we're supposed to go left or right, how can we get to our final destination? That's the question we need to ask ourselves. So if you've been trying something and it's not working for you, it's time to come off of that, come off of that road. Get on to God's plan, okay? He has a plan for your health. He has a plan for your life. And he has a plan for your salvation, okay? He wants you to make it to the kingdom. And his desire is to save each and every one of us that is here this evening. So without Amen. any further ado, I just want to share what our objectives are for this evening. Our objectives are, number one, to meet your needs, right? To meet your needs and to provide you with the support that you need in order to meet those goals, right? We're here. We're a health platform, extending your life naturally. But... The most important part is your spiritual life, right? You know, the health is one aspect of it, but your relationship with God is the other most important aspect as well, but they all work hand in hand. And what's the second objective? I'm trying to get to my screen here. You guys still see me? Yes, we yes. can. All right, awesome, good. Okay, so I can cheat a little bit here. <laughs> so the second one is to draw sin sick men and women to the man of Calvary, Jesus Christ, right? That is our goal here. And our final need is to provide health suggestions for educational purposes only, okay? So before you implement anything, yes, we advise you to speak to your health provider and get guidance. Everything that is shared on this platform is for your educational um, purposes, for, for informative, to give you information to share with you. That is the purpose of this platform here, okay? So first, pray, speak to God. Secondly, you speak to your health provider. Let them know, hey, you know what? I learned something new over the weekend and I wanna try this. Can you work with me so that way we can help to improve my health, all right? And I just wanna share a number with you guys. I don't know if you guys have your pens. I'm sorry, I'm, I can't share my screen right now, but I will share this number with you guys. It's 646. 400 5720 646 400 5720 and we would love for you to reach out to us if you need us to pray for the, for you and with you if you need assessment if you're going through a health challenge and you need some guidance as to how to tackle that we would love to help you if you need bible studies we're also here to assist you on that front as well 
So please feel free to reach out in the chat. However you want to reach out to us, we are here. Anything else, guys? Did I miss anything? A special welcome back to Brother Carlton. He's been out for a few weeks, but God is good. He brought him back to us. We miss you, bro. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. He's a good God. I just want to thank God for bringing me through the covert. And um, he is so wonderful. And believe me, my brothers and sisters, prayer and natural remedies work in the name Amen. of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So without any further ado, we want to be able to give our speaker as much time as possible. Dr. Jackson, listen, we usually wrap up around 630, but we're, we'll take you to seven. If you want to take us to eight, we'll stay. <laughs> Dr. Jackson's like, wait, hold on now. <laughs> all right. But you definitely, all right. Have, you definitely have till 630 and we're willing to give you till seven. It's up to you. But have we a crusade after. Take Remember the crusade at seven. Oh, we should have yes. that as okay. well. So six, six, 30, six, let's get started. All yes. right, let's get let's it get so, started. So, Sister Daly, if you mind, if you don't mind, can you please introduce our speakers? Give us a little um, intro to our speaker. And after we receive the bio this evening, we will have a special song by Sister Dina Daly. Okay, so the floor is yours, Sister Charlene Daly. Thank you so much. And I have Dana sitting by me. How are you today, Hi, Dana? Dana. <laughs> Elder, they didn't hear you. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Dana. Oh, it's so good to have her on the he uh, Healing of the Nation platform. She's always on. And it's our pleasure, Dana and myself, to introduce our illustrious speaker for the evening. It's none other than Dr. Thomas Jackson. Dr. Jackson is the uh, director of MEET Ministry, and MEET is Ministry, Education, ev and Evangelistic Training. He's a gospel medical missionary, and he does gospel medical missionary ministry, and he's been doing this for many years. MEET is located in the state of, anybody knows? What state it is located in? Yes, Tennessee. Tennessee, in the United States of America. He has a PhD in natural, natural health science and is a certified biblical lifestyle coach. He has been married for 49 years to the beautiful Dr. Laverne Jackson, and she's such a sweetheart. Please say hello to uh, Laverne for us, Dr. J. Amen. They have two children, six grandchildren, five godchildren, and are spiritual parents to a host of adopted children, and I'm making sure I'm one of them, Dr. J. He has traveled extensively in the United States and internationally, conducting health seminars and gospel medical missionary trainings. His goal in life is to glorify God, that others may see their good, that others may see God, their good works produced by the Holy Spirit and become partakers of God's divine grace to become sons and daughters of God. It is my absolute pleasure and delight to introduce Dr. Jackson. I remember when we had, you know, back in the day when we used to have face-to-face -face camp meeting, anybody remember that? Back in the day before COVID. And one year we had Dr. Jackson there and it was so amazing. I was so blessed. And I had the privilege of being someone to assist in making sure they were hosted and they were comfortable. And to tell the truth, they hosted me more than I hosted them. They were kind and generous and just wonderful. I also call meet ministry from time to time. And Dr. Jackson is just so generous. See, you know, and we can tell a Christian by their works, by their deeds. Meet ministry has been a very uh, productive place that have given birth to so many gospel medical missionaries. Very positive, very uplifting. And we continue to pray for you and your ministry, Dr. Jackson. It's Thank my you. pleasure to welcome you to our virtual Healing of the Nation platform. By God's grace, we'll keep you prayed up and we know we'll be blessed and inspired to go forward and share God's message after listening to you. Before Dr. Jackson comes on, like Charlene says, Dana wants to sing a medley of choruses for you. Go ahead, Dana, nice and loud. Fire, 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 fire on me. On the day of Pentecost, fire on me. Turn out the rain, turn out the rain. Start setting the gospel rain, 
Then I'll rain, then I'll rain, then I'll God's full rain. It's coming down, down, down. It's coming down when the glory of the Lord is coming down. Hallelujah. When the saints begin to pray, and the Lord will have his way. And the Lord, glory of the Lord is coming down. I've got my mind made up and I will turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. someday. I got my mind made up and I will turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. Goodbye world, I stay no longer with you. Goodbye pleasures of sin. I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Amen. 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 I got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. <clears throat> Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think that is our highest desire to see Jesus face to face. I'd like to thank you for the invitation and to be a part of this wonderful virtual experience. In the times we're living in, the world is living in fear and uncertainty. And so with the time we have, we like God to navigate us through his holy word. I'd like to have another word of prayer as we commence our time together. Let us pray. Father God, our sovereign God, we thank you for the privilege we still have during these times, which are glorious times. And in the midst of the storm, Father, you are the calmer and the peace. So I pray now that you would take control. Let the spirit guide us. Let the information be not to just mentally stimulate our minds. But Lord, I pray that you would embed these thoughts into our hearts. And that would have a transformation impact. And that we continue to be tools in your hand for the saving of souls. Let that sweet spirit guide us. Let your angels be around us. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we do pray for his name's sake. Amen and amen. In the book of Psalms, chapter 67, verse 2. Psalm 67, verse 2. The Bible reads, that thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. There is an inseparable relationship between our health and even salvation. When we think about saving, the word saving is me. And if you play saving and remove some letters and add, look at that word S-A-V-I-N-G off and put L in, you got S-A-L-V-E sav means to heal. So God has a plan for us during this season. God has a plan for COVID-19. He has a plan for healing the mind and the emotions, and the immune system. So, in our Bibles, let's look at the book of Psalms. Psalms 100, verse 3. Psalms 100, verse 3. The Bible reads, Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. 
So the Bible clearly defined or declare that we do not belong to ourselves. It is God who is the originator, the one who owns us by redemption and by creation. The book of Isaiah chapter 43 verse one tells us that God hands what prepared us. Notice what it says in Isaiah. It says, but thou, but now thus says the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by name. Thou art mine. So these scriptures declare, number one, the ownership of God. Keep that in mind. We do not belong to ourselves. It declares the ownership. So God has given us an owner's manual. The owner's manual tells us how to operate the product, how to maintain the product, how to troubleshoot the product. And that owner's manual is the Bible. Because every product comes with a manufacturer owner's manual. And within that owner's manual, God has given us laws, moral law and natural law. And he's given us a natural law, which we encapsulated and call God's plan. God's plan. G-O-D-S-P-L-A. In God's plan. These are eight natural laws of health found in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter two. These laws did not come into existence in the 24th century. These laws are as immortal and eternal as God himself. He's given us 10 moral laws and eight natural laws. They are inseparable. You know, several, several years ago, when Obama, you are familiar with Obama was president. His administration developed a, what you call an affordable health care plan under Medicaid. Anybody remember what that plan was called? The name of Obama's plan? Anybody know? Obamacare. Oh. Obamacare, absolutely. Now, then new administration came in. So Obamacare has been under attack to be rescinded, to be replaced, et cetera, et cetera. Now another administration is now in, they call it Biden care, but Obamacare was the center of attention. So let me tell you, my friends, God has, a health care plan is an affordable health care plan. Now, I just mentioned that including that plan are eight basic laws of health, godly trust, open air, daily exercise, proper rest, lots of water, sunshine, always temperate, and nutrition. Do you know what that care plan called? Oh, Bible care. Did you get what I just said? Oh, Bible care. Oh, Bible care is a plan that is eternal as God. It cannot be rescinded or replaced. And this program, this health care plan, plan is affordable health plan. You qualify for this plan by simply being one of God's children. Pre -con health conditions does not disqualify you. Age, race, creed, color. This plan is available to every creature on earth that God made in his image. It is called Bible care, living healthy without being wealthy, an affordable health care plan. In the book of Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, if thou would diligently hearken the Lord of thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. God declares, 
I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. That's Exodus 15, 26. Remember, in this verse, there's three primary conditions for God to fulfill his promise to us. Number one, he says, if you will diligently hearken, that means to listen. The next says, if, will, if you will do that, that means to choose. The third thing is to keep, to listen, to choose, and to obey. That's what God requires. And he makes a declaration. I will put none of these diseases upon thee that I brought from upon the Egyptians. For if you listen to me, and if you make a decision to follow my plan, to keep it, I will keep you. That's God's word. So therefore, in this time, of COVID-19 and all modalities from the natural to the conventions going around. God has fearfully and made a wonderful mechanism called the human body, according to Psalms 139. And within that body, he developed a wonderful internal bodyguard system that we might be very familiar with, the immune system. God equipped this body of viruses, bacteria, fungi, and parasites. A wonderful immune system designed to keep you and I healthy if we cooperate with that system. So does God have a plan for building a strong immune system? You see, our emotions have a direct impact upon our physiological health. Very important to understand that. And we see that in Mark chapter three, Verse 27, Mark 3, 27, I'm going to bring out a principle. It says, no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man. Then he will spoil his house. Now, what is the strong man as we draw inference the scripture, the strong man is the immune system. You see, in order for foreign invaders to thrive in the body, the powerful immune system must be weakened. Please understand that. In order for foreign invaders to thrive in the human body, the powerful immune system must be weakened. Now, what binds the immune system? I call it the fat cat. The fat cat. F-A-T, C-A-T. F stands for fatty and highly processed foods. A stands for anxiety and stress. T stands for toxicity, unhealthy exposure to toxic chemicals. C, caffeinated beverages. A, alcohol. T, tobacco, the fat cat. Did anybody hear that? Can anybody repeat what I just said? What does the F stand for? Fat. Fatty? Highly processed food, okay? A. Anxiety. Stress, very good. T. Toxicity. Toxic. <laughs> Amen. C. Caffeinated, Caffeinated beverage. Mm -hmm. A. 
alcohol. And tea. Tobacco. Amen. At least you listen to me. Take these notes down. Stress, because Proverbs 17, 22 said, Mary Hart, do it good like medicine. Sugar, write it down. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 1 through 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 17. Poor lifestyle habits. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 27. Antibiotics. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 18. What binds the immune system? So how can we strengthen this immune system? We realize that heredity loads the gun, but lifestyle pulls the trigger. So we have the Obama care, but we got the Bible care. And so let's delve into the Bible care, these eight wonderful laws. And we're gonna address one important of these eight laws. So now, before I move forward, can anybody list these eight laws in order, God's plan? Can anybody list the eight laws of God's plan? Talk to me. What's the first law? Ali trust. Second law. Open it. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Third law. Start with a D. Daily exercise. The fourth law. Sunshine. Five. Proper rest. Six. Lots of water, seven, always temperate. And number eight, but number eight is nutrition. Now I have a question. I call these the eight doctors that make house call. I have a question. Which one of those eight doctors that you and I cannot financially afford? Talk to me. None. Bonnie Thompson says none. S someone said none? None, yes. None. Zero. You, you can afford you can afford every one of these laws. You should from the from the richest person to the poorest person on this earth. They can afford these laws. It's not beyond a financial accessibility. That's what I hear you saying. Yes. Are you sure now? Because I've asked this question a hundred times around the world, especially in good old America. Do you know what that, you know which one of those laws that the average person say they cannot afford? Anybody want to take a, a intelligent, sanctified guess? Nutrition. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. They think that in order for you to be healthy, you got to eat from whole foods and earth fair. <laughs> What y'all think about that? You think that's true? In no. order for you to have, no, it's no. not true. No. no. Even if you don't have a garden, you can exchange that which is bad for good. Case in point, I remember giving a lecture in a place, I won't get into the description of it. And I was, I was talking about this. And the individual said, man, it, 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 it's, it's financially difficult, nutrition-wise, to live on this plan. And I explained some things. But anyway, so it just providentially, I was in the grocery store with the same person that the next day, and I'm a tall gentleman, so I saw the person, they had their shopping cart full of foods. And they just said in a week-long lecture of mine, and they said they could not afford nutrition on God's plan. And so I kind of stayed back because I did not want to make them feel uncomfortable. But when I got in line, they was in front of me. 
They looked around, look up, and you can see that eyeballs light up. Here's my point. In the basket, there was food, non-essential foods, such as your sodas and your chips and, and your dips, and et cetera. And so the person turned and said, Dr. Jackson, you see, I know it's difficult to eat nutritionally. I said, I understand, but let me just make a suggestion. You see that case of 7-Up in your shopping cart? Yes, sir. How much do you pay for that? Well, probably pay for $10, $15. Now, if you would take those cases of 7-Up, put it back on the shelf, and take the money you spent for the 7-Up and apply for some wholesome food. I hope y'all listening to me. Wholesome food. That means you're exchanging that which is not healthy for something that's good. So you're taking the money that you invested in health, unhealthy food, taking that money, put that unhealthy stuff back on the shelf, use the money to buy vegetables and fruit. If you got to have something to drink, get some unpasteurized orange juice. How many understand what I'm saying? Anybody understand what I'm saying? Amen. Thank, thank you for that one amen. I guess the other folks probably still processing. You can you put, in process chat, put in the chat. Put in the chat. Put in the chat, everyone. Amen. Yeah. There they go, Pastor. There they go, Doctor. All right. So we're going to look at godly trust. We're talking about healing the mind and the immune system. God, let trust. Let's go up to the top of these eight doctors. Psalms 107, verses 17 to 21, the Bible says he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. So there's healing in God's word. That's where the healing come from. God's word contains instruction information for us to follow by his grace to experience healing. That's Psalms 107, verse 17 to 31. Therefore, the top of God's plan, we call it God's plan. There's many ways of conceptualizing eight laws. But when we realize the book of ministry of healing it says, if the children of Israel had followed God's plan, they would have been a mighty and healthy nation. So God's plan has godly trust at the top. On that law hang all the other natural laws. Godly trust is pivotal in keeping our immune system healthy. Because in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, God has not given us a, a mind of fear. He's given us a mind, a sound mind, a sound mind. 1 John 4, 18. In Isaiah chapter 26, 3 and 4, God said, I will keep you in perfect peace, who mind is stayed upon thee. If you go with me to the book of Matthew chapter 9, let me summarize uh, this particular verse, Matthew chapter nine, verse one through eight. There was a man that was brought to Jesus. He had palsy, paralysis. And this is Christ's method of healing. And when they brought him to Jesus, the first thing Jesus said, you read in Matthew chapter nine, he said, son, be of good cheer or good courage. That addressed the mental disposition. Then he said to the man, thy sins be forgiven thee. That addressed the spiritual. Then finally he said, take up that bed and walk. That addresses the physical. So true health is wholeness mental, physical, 
and spiritual. You cannot have one without the other. Therefore, Jesus' method of healing is to be our uh, method. Not just focusing on the physical, but focusing on the three qualities of man, mind, body, and spirit. The mental disposition. You see, folks, nine-tenths of all diseases find their roots in the mind. Nine-tenths. That's 90% of all diseases that we face with cancer, AIDS, endometriosis, you name it. Nine-tenths of the diseases from which men suffer have a foundation in the mind. Because Satan is the originator of disease. If there was no sin, there would be no diseases. I say amen to that. And we realize a Christian physician must realize that he or she is not warring against sickness. He or she is warring against the work and the power of the originator of disease. And through our modern method, disease cannot be treated. Because treating disease is like mopping the floor while the water continues to pour. I'm gonna say that again. Treating disease is like mopping the floor while the water continues to pour. So the solution to that problem is, is to develop more mops, build mop factories. You can hire more people paying them $10 an hour. You can impact the economy with mop factories. Just keep mopping the water up. What y'all think about that? If you, you elect me for the mayor of your city, I'll help impact your economy. What y'all think about my method? Building mop factories. Not a good one, not a good one, doctor. Why is not a good one, Carl? Why is not a good one? What's wrong yeah. with that? I got to turn huh? off something. Something got to be turned off. But don't you want don't you want a job paying twenty dollars an hour? Now if I'm going to still be sick. <laughs> mercy. You see, and, and we it's humor in that, but that's the way society is. We capitalize upon the weakness and the frailties of others. And as you say, Carlton, turn the water off. Now, based on that, I want you to listen to this. I hope Carlton is not the only one listening, but I want someone to tell me outside of Carlton, tell me what is meant by this phrase. The cure is in the cause. The cure is in the cause. Someone tell me what do I mean about that? The cure is in the cause. Anyone else? Dr. Jackson, oftentimes the cause of the disease, right? Mm -hmm. Is the source, identifies the source of the problem. So once uh -huh. we identify what the source of the problem is, then we can deal with that properly. All right. So correct me if I'm wrong. If I find the cause and remove the cause, I have the cure. Sure. Amen. Amen. Joel 29, 16 said, the curse caused less should not come. Joel 26, 2. Joel 29, 16 said, the cause I knew not, I searched it out. Very important to understand that. So when we find ourselves during this pandemic, that's producing fear, anxiety, which is suppressing our immune system. The mind is under a holy onslaught of hormones 
spiritual arm of our blood vessels, hitting our adrenal glands, suppressing our immune system, inhibiting production of insulin. Fear. Fear has a devastating physiological, mental, and spiritual impact on our body. And we're doing some of the right things, some of us are more into a now. Okay. You got bumped off? It looks like Dr. Jackson's having some connectivity issues. So just bear with us for a few moments so that he, way he comes All right, on. I'm back on. You oh, hear me you back. Are. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Doctor, you got who was the last thing? <laughs> I, 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 I was going to ask you, Carlton. You repeat it for me. <laughs> 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 All right. This, so, so we find that that fear, anxiety, has a devastating impact upon our immune system. When we are under fear. The brain produces hormones that turbocharge through our blood vessels, through our system, impact our adrenal glands, suppressing our immune system, producing a hormone called cortisol. Even that stress will predispose us to diabetes because it inhibits the production of insulin. Stress, stress. And this is what we want to address and see practically what God's plan is for us to live in a stressful world, stress-free. What y'all think about that? Hmm? I agree. Amen. <laughs> we'll right in the chat. Right in the chat, everyone. Let's hear from All you right. in the chat. Now, so let's, let's, let's get some clarity of this God trust and stress. You see in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, when he placed them in the Garden of Eden, a pristine environment, no viruses, nothing, et cetera, et cetera. But we know there's an enemy that was cast into the garden, but that enemy was restricted he could not follow Adam and Eve around the garden. And God gave them implicit instruction. Describe that enemy and the territory which he was restricted. And as long as they trust God's word, the enemy had no advantage over them. So God gave them a simple test. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, God said to Adam and Eve, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou should not eat of it. Please listen. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. That's God's word. God said, do not eat of that tree. For in the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. Then we go over to chapter 3, verse 4. The woman, that's the first mistake, entered into a conversation with the adversary of God. And he said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Did you hear that? Now, what did God say? God said, if you eat of that tree, you shall surely die. And the devil said to the woman, you should not surely die. Who are you going to trust? Here we find the basis of our relationship of trust. God's word or the adversary. This is very, <clears throat> very important. In John 10, <coughs> this is what it says. They've come 
to rob, to steal, and to kill. To give you life and life more abundantly. So here we have two perspectives. One said, you should surely die if you disobey. The other one said, no, you're not going to surely die. Who are you going to trust? You see, if the devil come to steal life, according to John 10, 10, then he must also come to steal godly trust. He come to steal trust. He come to disrupt your connection with God, creating an environment of fear, questioning. Because stress, stress is something that we are faced with every moment. Now, there's a wonderful book that I know you all are familiar with that you should make available to your friends, whether they belong to the church or not. This book is called Ministry of Healing. That book was given to me 45 years ago, along with the Bible, as my pathway of understanding the very basic principles of health. In the hardback of that book, page 241, it says, the relation that exists between the mind and the body is very intimate. When one is affected, the other sympathizes. The condition of the mind affects the health to a far greater degree than many realize. It goes on and says, many of the diseases from which men suffer are the results of mental depression, grief, anxiety, discontent, remorse, guilt, distrust, all tend to break down the life forces and invite decay and death. Now let's take our time with this as we coming on down. As we read, there's an intimate relationship between the mind and the body. And when one is affected, the other sympathize with it. Have any one of you ever got up at night going to the restroom and you hit your big toe? Boom! The mind say mouth, say ouch. The mind say hand, grab toe. Automatic, hopping around. That's an oversimplification of it, but there is an intimate relationship between the mind and the body. And we realize that many of the diseases from which men suffer are the results of grief, emotional suffering caused by disaster, an unfortunate outcome, sorrow, that's grief, anxiety, apprehensiveness, uneasiness of mind, worrying, worrying, Discontent, a sense of grievance and dissatisfaction. Remorse, distress arising from a sense of guilt, of self-reproach. You're beating yourself up, self-pity, can't forgive myself. And distrust, having no confidence in or suspicion. All of these have the tendency to break down the life forces and invite decay and death, grief, anxiety, discontent, remorse, and distrust. Let's move on to the next half here. I hope you follow me so far. We're talking about healing the mind. The immune system, B 
building a healthy immune system, and the solution is godly trust. Now let's get a definition of what is stress. What is stress? I want you to listen to this first part here. Listen very carefully. Stress is valuable to human growth and development. Without stress, growth could not occur in the world. It is an essential element in life. Hope you got that. Let me repeat that. Stress is valuable to human growth and development. Without stress, growth could not occur in the world. It is an essential element in life. What that word essential mean? Necessary. By countering the stress of gravity, muscles grow larger. By taxing the mind, intelligence increases. And by trials and tests, patient and spiritual virtue may be advanced. Let's stop there. My question, is stress valuable and essential to human growth according to what I just said, according to this statement? What do you think? Yes. Yes, it is. Very good. I like that. That was very affirmative. All right. Due to that fact then, since it is according to this, because you can read Romans chapter 5, verse 3 and 4, due to this fact that stress is valuable to human growth and it is essential, why do we then say, I got to get rid of stress out of my life? What y'all think about that? Put it in your chat. I know you saying that. I've said that many years ago. Man, I got to get rid of this stress. It's killing me. I got to get rid of it. Until I came to realization, I did not know what I was talking about. Mercy. It, that's my that's dear, deep. That's it, deep. It took me 45 <laughs> Out of my 45 years, it took me seven of those years to find out that stress is not my problem. Now, let me go further for you kind of dub out on me. <laughs> I'm going to further give you clarification. Now, listen to this. Stress is destructive only when its intensity or duration exceeds my capacity to respond constructively. All right, let me repeat that. Stress is destructive only when its intensity or duration exceeds my capacity to respond constructively. Now, did you hear that very clearly? All right. Now, intensity. Anybody know what that word intensity means? Intensity. Intensity. Anybody know what that means? <clears throat> because we understand these principles, we're not going to have no rest in stress. <laughs> All right, for the sake of your time, my time, because I'm not going to eight o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Stress is destructive only when it intensity. Intensity is the strength, the strength of stress. Case in point, which is most intense if a tree fell on my car and wiped it out, or a tornado came through my neighborhood and destroyed my home. Which one is more intense? A tree falling on my car 
or a tornado wiping out my home? Which more is the tense? A tornado. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the strength. All right. Now, it says stress is destructive only when it intensity, that's the strength, or duration exceeds my capacity to respond to it constructively. Duration. What does the word duration mean? Duration. Amen. So we have the strength and the length. The strength of the stressor and how long I am experiencing that stressor will determine its impact upon my life if I do not know how to respond constructively. So I can say, well, the tornado that wiped out my house. So how I'm going to get rid of that situation. So stress is not my problem. It is the way I respond to that problem. We understand that. This is where we cannot live a true healthy life apart from having an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ because he is the source. As we read earlier in Isaiah 26, verse three, he said, I will give you perfect peace. Your mind is stayed upon you, upon me because you trust me. I have to be able to understand that the circumstances that God allow me to experience will work out my highest good. Why? Because circumstances ordained by God is teaching me lessons, lessons, to learn how to distrust myself in every situation and shift my focus from the problem to the solution. And that is allowing Christ to take full control of my life and the affairs of my life and navigate, govern it, and direct me to the course because he will bring treasure out of darkness. So circumstances, they're not my enemy. They are my blessing. I'm not saying that to lose your house and et cetera, but as a Christian, we can become traumatized. We don't have no money, we don't have this. I understand, I've been through those experiences. But when we recognize that God is not blind to my situation and that God loves me. God has my best interest. He can take that circumstance and turn it into a blessing. Stress is not your and my problem. Trust means to place totally confidence and dependence upon God. Psalm 62, verse eight. Psalm 62, verse eight. Psalms 118, verse 89. And Proverbs chapter three, 26. Trust. We need to learn what that word trust. The word trust means to relinquish your right, my right, to govern the affairs of my life into the hands of a sovereign God who know what is best for my life. And that is your challenge <clears throat> and my challenge. Those who are Christian, we talk about trust all the time, but to genuine experience what is meant by that, we don't experience. We're still filled with anxiety. You see, Christians with anxious hearts is because they have not, we have not made a complete surrender to the will of God. Complete surrender. 
and we fear the consequences of that surrender. What are the consequences? If I surrender my life totally in the hands of God, there's things I no longer will be able to do. I might lose friends and families. I might lose my job. All of these things impedes our trust walk with God. And you and I can not trust God unless we know God. For Jesus said in John 17, 3, this is life eternal, that you may know God and his son whom he sent. And so, if we're going to build a healthy immune system, we have to experience the trust factor that only comes from a complete acknowledgement that we need Christ to come into your life, my life, and take full control and ownership. I remember I was given a message at a church in another state. After that, I finished my sermon, I saw the elders and deacons praying with a mother and a son. I walked over to just see, could I be also a sister? And I asked the mother, what was her concern? And the young man was about 11 or 12, well-dressed. She said, my son has his own mind and want to control his own life. That's what she said. And therefore, he has no regards to the words or standards that govern the home and his life. So I asked the young man, what is it that you want in life? And he said, I want to be able to make up my own decision and mind. I want to be able to do the things that I think is good for me to do. As I listened to the young man, I said, that's interesting. I said, you're well-dressed. Look at those shoes you got on, creased pants, nice haircut. I said, now, do you go to school? He said, yes. What time you get up in the morning? Well, when school days, I get up X amount of time. When school is out, I get up anytime I feel like. What time you eat breakfast? Well, when I feel like, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then I asked him a question. I said, now, you young man, what do you want to do with your life? I want you to listen very careful of his answer. Now remember, what did he want? He wanted to be able to have control. He wanted control. He didn't want to be subject to anybody restraints. So I asked him, what does he want to do for the rest of his life? He said, well, when I get older, I'm going to join the army. Now you might not hear what I just said. This young man, he said, I want control. I want to be able to make up my own mind. And I'm going to join the army. So I smiled at the young man. And I said, you know, that's very interesting. Now, you said that you want to be able to have control. Yes, sir. I want control. I said, do you know anyone who has been in the army? Anyone in your family? No, sir. But I want to go to the army. I said, well, let me tell you something, son. Those shoes, those nice shoes you have on, you chose those shoes. Yes, sir. But when you join the army, you have no decision of what kind of shoes you're going to wear. Look at that nice haircut you have. You made a choice. You want that haircut faded, split down. You have no choice of what kind of haircut you're going to have. You're not going to have a choice what time to go to bed, what time to wake up. You're going to, you do not have a choice what you're going to eat and when you're going to eat. 
You don't have a choice. You have relinquished your decision in the hand of the United States Army. Hmm. So let's fast forward. Several months later, I was invited back to the same church, gave a message, and the young man and his mother was at the meeting. And I went over, reached out and shook his hand. Do you remember me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I remember you. I said, do you remember our conversation? Yes, sir. Now, I said, I remember very clearly what you told me. And you want to have control and you wanted to join the army. Is that your same position now? I said, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Here's the point. He realized that the army was not the place for him to do his own thing. You see, trusting God is to relinquish your right and my right to govern the affairs of my life and your life into the hands of a loving God who knows the best for us. This is trust. You see, faith is trusting God believing that he loves us and knows best what is for our good. Instead of our own, it leads us to choose his way. In place of, of our ignorance, it accepts his wisdom. In place of our weakness, his strength. In place of our sinfulness, his righteousness. And as I mentioned, Christians with angels heart, many who profess to be Christ followers have anxious, troubled heart because we are afraid to trust ourselves with God. We do not make this complete surrender for, the, for we shrink from the consequences that such a surrender may involve. Now, unless we do make this surrender, we cannot find peace. This comes from Ministry of Healing, page 480 and 481. Anxiety. Let's get down to the last part. Why does God want us to trust him? He want to give us a joyful heart. Proverbs 17, 22. He want to give us peace. Proverbs chapter 3, 5 through 6 and 8. Now write this down if you choose. This is how you spell stress. S-T-R-E-S-S. -S -S. This is what it means. Self-trust restricts every spiritual success. I'm going to repeat that. Stress, self-trust restricts every spiritual success. Can, can anybody repeat that in their own words very quickly? So I know you got it. Self-trust. Uh, self-trust restricts every spiritual success. Very good. Remember that. So godly trust is God-centered. Self-trust is self-centered. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't have to respond to this, but I'm going to give a number from 1 to 10. What is your stress level? You don't have to say anything, but 1 to 10, going up the scale, it's high. From 5 to 10, that's high stress. So you have to ask yourself a question. What was my stress level three years ago? What was my stress level three years ago from one to 10? And what is my stress level now from one to 10? Just jot it down. Five on up, that's high. What's your stress level? What are some of the physiological effects of stress? 
the mind affects the body. Remember that. When we're under stressors of life, it increases the heart rate. It increases the breathing. It constricts blood vessels. It increases blood fats. It weakens the immune system. Even our digestion stops producing all kinds of digestion disturbance. More nutrients are used up, potassium, calcium, and less waste removed. This is the effect of stressors in our lives. There's two types of stress, acute and chronic. Acute is a response to imminent danger. It turbocharged the system with powerful hormone that can damage the cardiovascular system. It's like going through the country at night in a deer shoot in front of your car. That's imminent danger. Your heart start pounding. Boom, 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 boom. That only is for a moment. Chronic stress is constant emotional pressure that you cannot control. It produces hormones that weakens your immune system and damage your bones. There's a biochemistry of, of toxic emotion. That stress response starts in the brain, which unleashes a flood of hormones that cause significant damage. The adrenal glands, which produces hormones and keep the joints healthy. Stressors cause dysfunction in the adrenal glands. Stress causes the release of cortisol, a hormone from the adrenal gland that inhibits insulin. Very important to understand that. Very important. Stress affects us from the head down to the toe. It affects every aspect of our body. The brain, nerves, which produce headaches and et cetera, skin, acne, skin problems, muscle, joints, aches and pains, heart, cardiovascular, stomach, nausea, weight gain, heartburn, pancreas, Increase the risk of diabetes, intestines, diarrhea, constipation, digestive disturbance, reproductive organs, irregular and more painful periods, reduce sexual desires. It, it produces many men, man in impotence, low sperm count, lowers the immune system. Stress drains the cells of oxygen, which feeds cancer, <coughs> suppresses the immune system, lowers calcium, potassium, which are very important in cell division, shuts down the digestive system. Stress can cause practically any disease, including arthritis, ulcers, high blood pressure, constipation, angina, diabetes, strokes, glandular disturbance. And anger, the most toxic emotion, suppressed anger is probably the most toxic emotion of. The physiology of suppressed anger leads to poor behavior choices and poor health. We need both mental and physical action to remedy the psychological, the physiology of toxic endogenous neurochemicals that build up in the brain, according to Dr. Christian Northrop, in women's body and women's wisdom. Anger, anger is your emotional security system. When someone
deal with the anger in a healthy way. Angry behaviors do little to address the root cause of this primary emotion and may in fact perpetuate. One minute of anger suppresses your immune system for six hours. Did you hear that? One minute of anger suppresses your immune system for six hours. Now, I don't believe in Confucius, but he made a profound statement. He says, an angry man is always full of poison. And that was a story <clears throat> of John Hunter, a famous 18th century British surgeon. And I quote, he states, John Hunter, my life is at the mercy of any scoundrel who chooses to put me in a passion that would enrage me. So John Hunter and a colleague of his got into a heated argument. And John Hunter stormed out of that room, slammed the door, went into the next room and dropped dead. An angry, bitter, unforgiving spirit produces negative chemical byproducts that are health destroying, especially that weakens the immune system. So if one minute of anger can suppress your and my immune system for six hours, what you th think about one minute of healthy laughter stimulates your immune system for 24 hours. Proverbs 17, 22. Think about that. It takes more muscles to frown than to laugh. Just one minute of laughter, folks. One minute of just an expression of joy on your face stimulates your immune system. Huh? For the Bible says in Ephesians 4.26, Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Because God will keep you in perfect peace. God tells me that trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he should direct thy path. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear, love the Lord, reverend the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Proverbs chapter three, verse five through eight. Let's close out with this. Finding rest in stress. That's what we need. We've seen what, how stressor impact our health. We see the whole position of trust. Now, how do you and I find rest in stress? So real quickly, I want, you, I want someone to write down the word stress, S-T-R-E-S-S. S-T-R-E-S-S. R E S S. All right. I want you to look at that word closely. Look at it closely. Rest in that word stress. It's a no. Anyone? I hope I'm still connected. Yes, you are, doctor. They just thinking. <laughs> oh, they thinking. All right. They thinking. Now, now, Carlton, do you, you help me out? You did you write down that word? No, nope, but I I think I can get, get it. <laughs> but uh, because I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just moderating. Oh, but somebody they put in the chat. They wrote it down. They in the chat. 
It's in All the right. chat. In the chat. Yes. Okay. I, I just wonder, am I speaking to the computer, robot, real people? Amen. All right. <laughs> There are people here. Over yeah. 200. Yes. <laughs> and there? Oh, yes. 214 oh, souls. Mm-hmm. You got, you got, you got S-T-R-E-S-S. -S. All right. Now, finding rest in stress. There's two things we must do to the word stress. Only two things in order to pull the word rest out of that word stress. I'm going to repeat. This is a principle that must be applied to our lives in 2022. There's two things that we must do to that word stress in order to get the word rest. Two things. Put in your chat. Somebody let me know what two things that has to be done to that word stress in order to get the word rest. Two things. We're coming to a close. All right. Somebody put trust in divine, um, divine power, Dr. Jackson. Now, say that again. Somebody trust put in divine power. All right. No, 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 no. I, I don't think you understand me now. I'm looking at that word, the spelling S T R E S S. I'm looking at, I'm saying in that word stress, do you see the word R E S? S T in it. <clears throat> I have to rearrange the T. Ah, all right. <laughs> oh, very good, dear. You hear what you said? You have to do what? Say it again. Rearrange. All right, that's number one. We got to rearrange. Tell me what you got to rearrange. The S and the T at the beginning of the word. All right, you got to rearrange the. You said rearrange the S and the, and T. the T. How are you going to rearrange that? What are you going to do? Move it to the end. <laughs> well, we have to put the, remove right. the S and then put the T All right. after the first. Right. Stop. The hold on a minute, hold on. Okay. So, hold on, you're on the right track. Now let me share this with you for the sake of time. Okay. You use two words, rearrange and remove. Keep that in your mind. Okay. So the first thing is we gotta remove some letters. You get this? So the letter in front of the S in front of the T must be removed. Hello Thank out you. there. Amen. The S at the end must be removed. You get that? And now we got to do some rearrangement. I'm going to say it again. The S before the T in front must be removed. The last S at the end must be removed. So you're removing those two S. Now you got to do the arrangement. Now what you Dr. Jackson, you missed the last part. Can you just remove after we rearrange? I'm sorry. All right, let's, let's go back. I want you to get this. So we see this word S-T-R-E-S-S. -S. So that first S, the first S is will be removed, removed, total removed. The last S, total removed. Are you clear? Yes. Okay. 
we got to rear we got to rearrange a letter. So let's paint a picture. You're removing the first S and the last S, and now you got the word, you got the letters T R E S. Do you see that? Dr. Jackson, I have that if you want me to show it. Show it. Okay, if they let me share the screen. Okay. You should be able to, Carlton. Here we go. I hope I can do it. Okay, can you see it, guys? It's working. Okay, let me just blow it up. There you go. There you go. Now, so I'm trying to. <clears throat> Got it here on my screen. Now, talk to us, Carson. Oh, no, doctor, that's all you. <laughs> I'm getting back. You're, you're my teacher. Uh -uh. <laughs> all right. So, do you see what's taking place? We're moving the two S's, the S in the beginning and the S on the end. Then we have T R E S. So, what we're going to do is now take the T and put it at the end of the existing S. We'll rearrange the letter T. Did y'all get that? Yes. Hello out there. Yes. All right, now, so this is what we call finding rest in stress. Now, how do we apply that to our life? This is what I wanna leave you with in 2022, to deal with the healing of the mind and to boost up our immune system, we got to look at our life situation. We got to look at it from this perspective. What things in my life that need to be removed from it, eliminated? Secondly, what must do? What kind of rearrange? in my life that must be taken that I can truly in stress. And let me give you an example of this. In my life, like I said, I've been in this work for 45 years. It was seven years ago that I had an encounter. Some heard of my experience. And this encounter changed the trajectory my whole life. And so when I went to London, England, my wife and I to conduct a training school for two weeks, July 17, 2015. We landed in London, England that Friday, dispatched from the airport, fellowship, et cetera, et cetera, walk. I go to bed. Friday night, I went to sleep Friday night. I did not wake up no more to seven days later. I did not have a heart attack. I did not have a stroke. As I laid there on my back, my eyes wide open, my wife heard a grunting sound coming from my body. She shoved me, honey, honey. There was no sound in my body, no heartbeat, no pulse. There was no life in my body, no life. Check my pulse, check everything, nothing. We go back downstairs to get cayenne pepper. 20 minutes. And mouth, it rolled off the side of my mouth because those who've been trained, those who understand cayenne is a vasodilator, nothing. 30 minutes lapse. Then they call MT. Ambulance come. They began to do their medical procedure. Dump me into the ambulance. 
bypass a hospital, which is six blocks from where I was staying. Took me to King's College Hospital in London, England. They froze my brain for 24 hours. Tubes running everywhere. They told my wife, if he lives, he would never talk nor walk. So I stayed in that condition. Here's the point. Now, how long did I say I was in this work? 38 years. And let me give you the gist of this so you can really hear the impact. And I would go to bed every night at 9 p.m. on time, unless I'm given a meeting. I mean, I go to bed straightly at 9 p.m. But I would go to sleep to 2 a.m. in the morning. Why? Because I'm ruminating, thinking about what is today. I got a plan for tomorrow. I got to have all my keys. In the I've been there for 38 years. And so God allowed this to happen. And when I lay there in that unconscious state, Dr. Jackson, a small, still voice spoke. Uh, Jackson, we saw you broke up. You broke up. So we want to hear that. Uh, we didn't hear the, right. uh, this. We heard from seven days. That was it. You broke up. Can you All right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Can you hear me, Carlton? Can you hear yes, me now? Can, yeah. mm -hmm. So I'm in that state. Seven days, comatose, and a small, still voice spoke three scriptures, very familiar scriptures, nothing new. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 23, and verse 23 says, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it comes the issues of life. Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful, desperately wicked. Who can trust it? Ezekiel 36, verse 20 to 25, and you know this, it says, I'm going to take away that stony heart and give you a heart of flesh. Then he gave me a 15-second flashback, not from the time I was born, but the time I entered into this work. He gave me a panoramic view of all the places I travel around the world. The HIV, full-blown AIDS recovery, diabetes, cancer, people dying, people healing. All the good works that I was performing, I knew I was ready to be translated into the kingdom of God. And God had to allow me to have this experience to come to a reality. The reality is, my friends, you got to get this. Then that voice said, many going to come to me, said, Lord, have we not cast out demons in your name? Then he said, I knew not you workers of iniquity. And the voice said, son, just like the son, I do not have all of your heart. Then it says, surrender. When it said surrender, the voice faded away. And on the seventh day, the Sabbath, I woke up. I woke up. And there were five doctors surrounding my bed. I could not even hardly communicate. And soon I opened my mouth to these doctors. I quoted a scripture, Proverbs 26, 2. The curse causeless. As though I was speaking to people who understood heavenly language, but they did not. I caught myself. So I'm going to share what I shared with them. And I could not. I said, doctors, 
what is your diagnosis? And there was a 10 second silence. They looked at one, and they looked back at me. They said, Mr. Jackson, all the tests that we have performed on you from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, we find nothing organically wrong with your heart. Your arteries are clean as a baby. Now I knew the, pro the prognosis, the, the prognosis, death. Like I said, I did not have a heart attack nor a stroke. And so the doctors came to the conclusion since they, and we got doctors online, when the doctors do not know truly the known condition is called idiopathic, idiopathic. They were attributed to heredity. And what took place in my body, in the right chamber of my heart, in the right node, the conductor of electricity that conduct electrical current, that, that flat line. That line. That's vital force. I mean, life stopped. Just stop. I died. They say it's heredity. Then I said to the doctor, What is your protocol? What method that you have in case of life? In that hospital, in that country, three individuals died from the electrical malfunction of the heart. Cricket player, a soccer player, all in their 30s. And one was 30 years age. He died. And I woke up and I listened to those doctors and they told me the procedure that they got to take. They're gonna must take. They say, we're gonna run the probe through your arteries to the right chamber of your heart and zap that no out. Zap it out, wipe it out. I didn't need no time to think about it. Throw up a prayer. Because when they do that, either I'm gonna need a, a heart transplant or a heart pacer. And I said to the doctors, I thank my God for your service that you rendered to my wife and I, but I refused that procedure. And they said to me, there's only two places in the United States that specialize in that, two places. Vanderbilt, that's in Nashville, and University of Alabama. A two-week trip in England ended up in two months. Prayer, prayer went around the world. Prayer. The Bible said, cast your bread on many waters and then return you. I, I'm not even cognizant of the lies impact that we have touched, but prayer went around the world. And on that seventh day, God woke me up, woke me up, provided me a place in the country outside of London, England, where I had to learn all over again to walk, to talk, and to present. God put in the country precious souls who are precious that assisted my wife. And after two months, I came back to the States. My cardiologist stayed with my wife the whole time, internet. He only specialized in the pressure, but it does not specialize in the 
We had a specialist. This this lovely person. So we drove two hours to see this doctor. When the doctor walked into the examination room, he looked at my wife and greeted. I said, on the examination table, he looked at me, started walking towards me slowly, and he stopped for a moment, staring at me. Then he reached out and grabbed my hand and whispered in my ear. And he said these very words, God is good to you. And I listened to him. I said, Doc, explain this situation to me. He specialized in this process. He says, all the ones that I have addressed, only 15% of those folk survive. In surviving, they could not walk, about this surgical procedure that they wanted to perform. He said, well, we're, we're monitoring because today in technology, they can wire you up. You can take the machinery home. It will monitor you. I did that for a period of time when I went back to my last several visits. I said, doc, what do you find? He said, Mr. Jackson, like cancer. You got to have markers. If there's no markers, there's no indication. We can find nothing, nothing that will indicate that you have to have a surgical procedure. He said that, as I mentioned, God is good to you. That's been seven years ago. Now, why am I saying this? For the first, out of the 45 years, the 30 years, my life was filled with activity, good activity, missionary activity. I've had the privilege, like some, I've traveled around the world. I've been to every continent except for the North Pole. I've been in the jungles of Africa and Papua New Guinea, Guinea. I've seen full blown AIDS, et cetera, et cetera. I'm on a plane every two weeks, my wife traveling around the world. And rest between beats. And God allowed that situation to come into my life to reveal to me the blind spot in my life, to reveal to me that I was in control. And in his merciful love, he spared my life to let me know that he loves me and that he will give me a peace that only Christ can give me if I choose, choose to give him consent to take my heart fully and completely. And seven years ago, my friends, I seriously took God's word. From that point to this point, I still go to bed at 9 p.m., but I sleep like a baby. I don't ruminate. And when there, I'm learning. I have about, we have about people working on staff. And when there is contention, there's problems that exist. There's no anxiety. There's no dripping of sweat under my arms. My stomach turns not into knots. No headaches, no stress. Because I read a statement. It says every problem, every difficult is a call to pray. And I remember coming back to the office because people look to me to have an answer because I'm quick with the lips. <laughs> I'm quick. I got a plan. I got to be on top. But God took this glory of man and laid it in the dust. And I can tell you, my friends, today, 
those who know me today. Anxiety? No. Because I understand that I could not give my heart to God. I had to give him consent to take my heart because it belonged to him and to keep it. I had to continue to delve into his word, to get greater clarity, to know God, because I did not trust God with my life. You can't trust him unless you know him. So I began to develop, Lord, develop the whole step-by-step -step plan that I've been using for seven years to know God. Practical steps. Change. 180 degrees. I this year. 75. And Psalm 71, verse 18 is my mandate. Psalm 71, verse 18. David says, Lord, but I'm old and gray head, forsaken me not until I show you this generation to come. And when I step out of God's way, this ministry has been in existence for 34 years. It started off with 30 acres. Now has expanded to 122 acres. God has begun to open the doors because he wants us to be in a position to equip men and women with tools. I purpose in my heart every moment to give God to govern my life. I have found rest in stress. One priority is God. Number two priority, my marriage. Number three, then the work. I had to make some rearrangement. I removed from my life things that are necessary. I removed from my life the desire to respond to every request that comes to my plate. Dr. Jackson, I need you over here. I need you over there. I need you over there. I'm not God. I've learned to say, my friend, not at this time. I learned to pass the torch on to my fellow workers. I learned to stay in my lane. I learned to go in God's race at his pace. Because in the past, I was moving too fast. Oh, that is my story. Amen. Did you hear what I just said? Amen. 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 <laughs> Brother <laughs> Dr. Jackson, we just want to thank you so much for sharing this message with us this evening. We know Praise that the God Lord. used you powerfully. And I must say, it's it begins in the mind. It really does. And we really need to remove and rearrange <laughs> a lot of things, all right, in our lives. I praise God. Thank you so much, Dr. Jackson, for joining us this evening. And I just want to ask you if you could just close us out in prayer. Sure. All right. Let us pray. <clears throat> our gracious, dear, eternal, holy, righteous Father. We are eternally grateful that you are mindful of the frailness of your children. But Lord, every day you give us a glimpse of your love and your glory. I personally thank you for the forgiveness of sin, the grace to overcome. I thank you for the witness you put in the life to bear witness of others, that they might see a God who is infinite concern with the affairs of life, and that you want to use us as instruments for blessing others. 
So may you use this particular ministry as they move on in sharing the good news of Obamacare, the good news of the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, Father, we give you permission to take these hearts of ours because we cannot give them to you. They belong to you. And that you will keep them pure for their name's sake because we cannot. And save us in spite of ourselves, our Christ like self. And raise us up into a pure atmosphere of heaven that is rich current of love might flow through us to everyone that come under our influence. And we give you praise and glory, for you are worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. If you, have, if you have been blessed, I just want you to put an amen in the chat. Hallelujah. You know, whatever. Do a reaction. Praise God. And right now we will be transitioning. So do not go anywhere. I, I, I want to encourage you because we've been sitting down for a while. So stand up, stretch, you know, go grab some water because um, we'll be transitioning into our health series, right? We have an evangelistic series going on right now you'll see the flyer on your screen is called healing for a hurting world healing for a hurting world and i believe that dr jackson's message was a great transition into tonight's message which will be brought to us by our very own from eden lifestyle dr monet saint just so if you haven't been able to join us this is a series that actually began yesterday so you didn't miss much we will be continuing this evening at seven and this series will take place every day and we will be concluding on February 5th. So please stick around.